Okay, join me on page 682. The genre for our story this week is nonfiction. It's a detailed account of real people or situations using verifiable facts. So this is a true story. Well, we're going to be summarizing using a sequence chart. And your sequence of events chart is in your Google Classroom. And read to find out what role did the sled dogs play in the sequence of events. Okay, follow along on page 683. The Great Serum Race, Blazing the Iditarod Trail by Debbie S. Miller. Illustrations by John Van Zyl. In March every year, dog sled teams and drivers from all over the world compete in the Iditarod Trail Sled Dog Race. This race, over a thousand miles from Anchorage to Nome, Alaska, commemorates the famous serum run of 1925. It is the longest sled dog race in the world. In this selection, you will read about how it all began. Okay, continuing on 684. On a dusky January afternoon in 1925, Dr. Welch walked quickly toward the outskirts of Nome. Sled dogs howled from their yards. Outside a small cabin, a worried Inupiat Eskimo mother greeted the doctor. She led him into our home where two small children lay in bed, struggling to breathe. Can you open your mouth? Dr. Welch asked the three-year-old boy. The weak child tried to open his mouth, but it was too painful for his swollen throat. His fever was extremely high. Dr. Welch comforted the mother and children, but there was little he could do. The next day, both children died. Soon after, another girl, Bessie Stanley, was miserable with the same symptoms. But this time, Dr. Welch could examine Bessie's throat. He immediately recognized the symptoms of diphtheria. Poor Bessie would not live through the night. Diphtheria. Dr. Welch had not seen a case in 20 years. This fast-spreading disease could wipe out the entire community of more than 1,400 people. Dr. Welch immediately met with the city council and recommended a quarantine. The schools and other public places were closed. Community leaders told people to stay in their homes. Continuing, 685. There was only one way to fight diphtheria. The town needed a supply of antitoxin serum. Dr. Welch sent out a desperate plea for help by radio telegraph. The message soon reached Governor Bone in Juneau and other important officials. Newspapers across the nation picked up word that the historic gold rush town needed emergency help. The nearest supply of serum was at a hospital in Anchorage, a thousand miles away, across a snowbound wilderness. Officials considered flying the serum to Nome, but it was too dangerous to operate open cockpit planes in extreme cold temperatures. In those days, planes were used only during the summer. Nome was an ice-bound port, so boats were not an option. The serum could travel partway by train, and then the only safe means of transport was by sled dog team. On January 26, an Anchorage doctor carefully packed the glass bottles of serum for the long journey. The bottles had to be protected to keep the serum from freezing. He gave the 20-pound bundle to the conductor at the train station. Okay, continuing. Page 686. And on to page 687. Soon, Steam Engine 66 began to chuck its way north to Ninana the closest railroad link to Nome. Ninana lay nearly 300 miles away beyond the tallest mountains of North America. On the frozen Tanana River, five-year-old Alfred John could hear the distant roar of the steam engine. His Athabascan Indian family lived in a cabin near the train station in Ninana. Although it was late at night and nearly 50 degrees below zero, Alfred and his mother bundled up in their warmest caribou legskin boots and fur-lined parkas and walked to the station to greet the train. As they waited by the tracks in the moonlight, Alfred watched the huge locomotive hiss steam into the frozen sky and slow to a screeching halt. He saw men unload the freight, and the conductor hand the serum package to Bill Shannon. Bill was the first of 20 mushers to carry the serum in a dog team relay to Nome. These brave men and their best dogs would travel nearly 700 miles on a snow-packed mail trail. Bill covered the serum with a bear hide and lashed it to the sled. His strongest team of nine Malamutes barked and were anxious to move. Just before midnight on January 27, Bill waved goodbye to Alfred and shouted to his dogs, Swoosh! Into the winter night, the dog team sped toward Tolovana, 
the first relay stop some 52 miles away. Bill knew every turn of the trail. Like many of the mushers, his regular job was to transport mail and freight with his dog team. Traveling long distances in the extreme cold was a dangerous challenge. If the dogs ran too fast and breathed too deeply, they could frost their lungs. When the team reached bitter cold stretches along the river, Bill slowed his dogs to protect them. He often ran behind the sled to keep himself warm. Okay, continuing, page 688. Hundreds of miles away, Togo leaned into his harness and waited patiently for Leonard Zapala to position Scotty and the other Huskies. Togo, now 12 years old, was a proven leader for one of the strongest dog teams in the world. Leonard, dressed in his warmest squirrel parka, sealskin pants, and reindeer mucklucks, had carefully chosen 20 of his best dogs. Officials had asked the famed Norwegian musher to intercept the serum at Bulato a village located halfway between Nome and Ninana. Jingle jangle, the bells on Leonard's sled rang as the team rounded the corner. There were so many dog teams in Nome that mushers were required to carry bells to warn pedestrians. Togo led the team down Front Street while friends wished them good luck. Continuing, page 689. In Tolavana, Edgar Calland, the 20-year-old Athabascan Indian mail driver ate breakfast and waited anxiously for Bill Shannon. The Tolavana Roadhouse was a favorite rest stop for Edgar. Outside the roadhouse, Edgar's dogs pricked up their ears, and some began to howl. Bill's team drew closer. The team looked exhausted when their frosted faces came into view. Two of the dogs would later die from frozen lungs. Following the doctor's instructions, Bill carefully removed the serum. He hurried into the roadhouse to warm the container and prevent the serum from freezing. As the two men talked about the weather, Edgar put on three pairs of socks and his boots. Once the serum warmed, Edgar took off for Manly Hot Springs with his team of seven dogs. The 31-mile trip to the next relay point was brutally cold. Temperatures fell to 56 degrees below zero. At one point, the dogs had to wade through slushy overflow, a place where the river seeped through a crack in the ice. When the team reached Manly Hot Springs, the dogs could barely lift their ice-crusted legs. Edgar's mitts were frozen stiff to the sled handle. A roadhouse worker poured a kettle of hot water over the mitts to melt the ice and free Edgar's hands. Okay, continuing on page 690. The relay continued from musher to musher, roadhouse to roadhouse, with teams pushing west through the biting cold. At each relay point, the mushers warmed the serum over wood-fired stoves. Following the winding rivers, the teams covered an average of 30 miles each at a speed of 6 or 7 miles per hour. The mushers traveled around the clock, usually by moonlight or twilight. In the middle of Alaska's winter, only a few hours of sunshine fell on the teams each day. When the 12th dog team headed for the village of Nulato, waves of northern lights flowed across the sky. Musher Charlie Evans faced the coldest temperatures at 64 degrees below zero. He wrapped the serum in a rabbit skin robe for extra protection. Charlie's nine dog team moved slowly. Near open stretches of water on the Yukon River, a layer of eerie ice fog blanketed the valley. The ice fog, a mist of ice particles, was so dense that Charlie could barely see his wheel dogs, the ones closest to the sled. The experienced dogs followed the trail by scent rather than sight. Nearing Mulatto, two of the dogs moved stiffly and dragged their paws. The skin was beginning to freeze. Charlie stopped the team and gently loaded the poor dogs into the sled. In their struggle to save the lives of Gnome's residents, these two dogs would fall victim to the deadly weather. Continuing, page 691. When the team reached the halfway point, conditions in Gnome had grown worse. Five people had died from the disease, and more than 20 cases had been diagnosed. Another 30 people were suspected of having diphtheria. Newspapers across the country reported Nome's plight and the progress of the serum run. The relay teams pressed onward. Togo and team worked their way east to intercept the serum. When Leonard passed villages, he told residents about the epidemic and advised them to stay away from Nome. As the team approached the village of Shaktulik, Togo picked up the scent of another dog team and sprinted forward. 
Leonard could see a musher in the distance trying to untangle his string of dogs. On by, Leonard shouted to Togo. Togo followed the familiar directions and steered the team away from the confusion. Serum, turn back, shouted Henry Ivanov, one of the relay mushers. In the howling wind, Leonard barely heard the words. Luckily, he looked over his shoulder to see the musher waving frantically at him. Leonard was surprised to see the relay team. After he set out for Nulato, twenty more mushers were chosen to travel short relays to speed up the serum run. Out in the wilderness, Leonard had no idea that his rendezvous point was now 130 miles closer. Gee, Leonard yelled to Togo. Togo gradually turned right and the swing dogs helped pull the sled toward the waiting team. The two men greeted each other briefly, shouting in the gale. Within minutes, Leonard had secured the serum package to his sled and instructed Togo to head home. Okay, continuing on page 692. Togo and his teammate had traveled more than 40 miles that day with the wind at their backs. Now the fierce gale blew in their faces with 30 below zero temperatures. Blowing snow plastered the team as they approached Norton Bay. Leonard considered the risks. If they crossed the frozen bay, the sea ice might break up in the powerful gale. They could be stranded from shore on drifting ice. If they skirted the bay on land, the trip would take much longer. Leonard thought of the children in Nome who were suffering from the disease. He decided to take the shorter route and cross the treacherous sea ice. Leonard believed that Togo could lead the team across 20 miles of frozen sea. As they pressed into the wind, the dogs hit slick stretches of glare ice. They slipped, fell, and struggled to move forward. But mile after mile, Togo kept his course through the wall of wind. At day's end, Togo picked up the scent of food that drifted from the Inupiat sod house at Isaac's Point. After traveling 84 miles, they rested for the night. The dogs devoured their rations of salmon and seal blubber. The following morning, Leonard discovered that the previous day's trail had vanished. The ice had broken up and drifted out to sea. Worried about the unstable conditions, Leonard decided to hug the shoreline for safety. Okay, continuing, 693. Togo led the way toward Dexter's Roadhouse in Golovin, about 50 miles away. Along the coast, the wind's force became unbearable. Blowing snow blasted the dogs' faces like buckshot. Some of the dogs began to stiffen up. Leonard stopped the sled and gently massaged the freezing muscles of Togo, Scotty, and the others. When they finally reached Golovin, the dogs collapsed and buried their ice-coated faces beneath their tails. Togo and team had traveled farther than any other relay team. Now it was another dog's turn to lead a fresh team of 17 Malamutes to Bluff, the final relay point. With a shout from musher Charlie Olson, lead dog Jack charged off into the blowing snow. After struggling through four hours of whiteout conditions, the experienced leader faintly heard a dog barking through the gale. It was Balto. At Bluff, Balto and Fox waited for Gunner Kaysen to adjust the leather harnesses and secure the serum package. Then the pair of leaders heard their mushers shout through the raging wind. Balto and Fox led the strong team of 13 huskies into the swirling snow. Mile after mile, they trotted steadily toward Nome. During the final leg of the run, the wind assaulted them. A violent gust flipped the sled over, and the dogs went flying. And continuing, 694. Gunner struggled to his feet against the might of the wind. After he fought to untangle the dogs, he checked the sled to make sure the serum was securely fastened. Gunner felt the bottom of the sled in disbelief. The serum package was gone. In the dark, he crawled around the sled. Since he couldn't see his surroundings, he took off his mitts and felt through the snow with his bare hands. After more than 600 hard won miles and 20 teams risking their lives, could it be that the serum was lost forever? Panicked, Gunner ran his numb hands across the windswept bumps of snow. All he could do was hope. Suddenly, he felt something hard. It was the serum. His frostbitten fingers struggled to tie the package onto the sled. Then the wind-battered team ran off. They struggled on through the night. With less than 20 miles remaining, two of the dogs ran stiffly and appeared to be freezing. 
Gunnar anchored the sled and put rabbit skin covers on the dogs to protect their undersides from frostbite. Okay, continuing, page 695. Through the darkness, Balto and Fox smelled familiar scents. At last the exhausted team reached Null. They drove into town as most people slept through the blizzard. When Gunnar knocked on the door, Dr. Welch greeted him with a stunned face. How could a musher and team have fought their way through such a storm? With stiff hands, Gunnar gave the shocked but thankful doctor the life-saving serum. Twenty brave mushers and more than 160 strong dogs traveled hundreds of miles in the worst conditions. The incredible relay took less than six days. Four dogs perished and several others grew lame because of the lethal weather. Yet their struggle saved many lives in Nome. One month after the epidemic first began, the quarantine was lifted. The schools reopened, and children hugged their old friends. The whole town celebrated by holding a dance and watching a movie at the theater. Togo, Scotty, Balto, Fox, Jack, and all the other dogs were true heroes. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.